Hello, everybody. Happy Saturday. I hope you're having a good weekend. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. And what a wild week it was. So many stories to get into. Rachel and Tino, Zach and Gabby. There will be some spoilers regarding how their finales end. Although I tell you, even if you have the spoilers, who knows what's going to happen Tuesday night in the part two of the finale. Well, to recap the week, it was in a wild one at that. We've got a friend of the show, TikTok extraordinaire. He's an Instagrammer and YouTuber. Uh, give it up for my friend, Zachary Reality. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so excited to have Zachary Reality here. How are you, buddy? Oh, Dave, I'm doing well. It has been a very long week. Lots of Bachelor Nation drama, but we're in the home stretch, and I think we need to just kind of, you know, keep this content rolling because there's just so much to talk about. And even if we're exhausted, we got to get one last stream before, you know, we hit the weekend. Yeah, I thought we had at least three, like, number one stories of the month all drop in one day. Might have been number one stories of the year. We had multiple big stories. What was your biggest moment of the week? I mean, I think the Eric story with his ex-girlfriend, Amanda, those text messages, when that dropped, I was just like, I don't have time for this. Like, this is not part of the script. Like, we already know Rachel and Tino are not going to work out. So now it's just like, oh, I have no I have no hope for Gabby and Eric anymore. So this season just kind of feels like a disaster. Yeah, you know, the, the info dropped in the e like afternoon, and it was like right at that hour where I'm like, if I get this out, it's like 9 p.m. East Coast time. I was like, can I wait till the morning? I was like, can they just drop the uh, content during my work hours? That'd be nice for us West Coasters here. Yeah, but the content never stops, Dave. And you know this. I know this. We make content every single day. It literally never stops. A trick that I actually do is I film my TikToks like the night before I go to bed. So since I'm on the West Coast as well, I know that I'll have TikToks up at like 6 a.m. I'll post it and I'll go back to sleep because the people on the East Coast are already up and they want the tea right away. Yeah, you know, that's that's such a good point. When I was vacationing in Hawaii a few months ago, I had to make content at like 9 p.m. just because of the large time difference, and it was exhausting. But you're right. You, you, we wake up, and it, like uh, Bachelor Nation really runs on East Coast time. So we wake up, and we're already behind the scenes. For Thursday, for yesterday morning, I had, uh, I had set my alarm for 5 a.m. just because we had so much to get to. And each story was as important as the next. We had Rachel and Tino, a huge story. Zach ha has had multiple stories. And then there's all these other stories that would have been lead stories that now became throwaways, like all these other sort of like ongoing fires we're trying to put out. So um, I don't know. I mean, like, what's your general process for dealing with breaking news like that? Do you just drop what you are working on and get to the new thing? Is it like, uh, what's the top uh, priority? And how, how do you kind of navigate that? I mean, I think when it comes to news, it's better to just get it out right away because a lot of people are talking about The Bachelor or any other celebrity topics. And news reporters, we are all in a way a competition. You know, we people find their favorite news reporters and content creators to follow. And sometimes getting the tea out first or as fast as possible, that's the video that's going to go viral. Because if you wait, then people already know the tea. They're less likely to watch. But I do think that if you gain a loyal audience, people are going to tune into your opinion specifically regardless. But if there is a breaking news story, I have pulled over. Like, I have been in the car and had to pull over to the side of the road to say Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson have broken up. And honestly, my arm is starting to hurt from, like, holding my phone from making all these TikToks. I'm making, like, 9 to 10 a day during the week because the tea is that hot. Yeah, you know, the, the, the news has been breaking when I'm either at a Starbucks or heading to a Starbucks. Uh, during Rachel Kirkconnell season, which uh, was pr still the biggest news story I've ever covered, when she yeah. issued her apology on Instagram, I was pulling into a Starbucks. And as soon as I got like 15 messages in a row, I just did a U-turn. I was like, we got to go home. And then this mm -hmm. week... Or, I'm sorry, last week I was at a Starbucks. Uh, my day was done. It was like mid-afternoon. I was going to get some writing done, do some other things, just relax, people watch. And then Eric Shore issued his blackface apology. And I was like, got to get home for this. So yeah, Gotta get home. You, you got, and if I'm not home, I've been known to, um, during Katie Thurston's season, when she did 12 Days of Mess, I had to report from like the lines at a Disney World theme park. So 
Yeah, yeah. No, I love Dave on the road. Whenever you're in like a different country or wherever you're traveling, I think it's absolutely hilarious. I also remember when that Sasha story broke with oh. the Clayton thing. It was a Saturday. I was day drinking at the bungalow and I'm just like, I don't have time for this. But luckily, like on my main platform is TikTok. So I can kind of make videos anywhere. I don't necessarily always have to be home. And I mean, sometimes I'll just do like trending sounds instead of like giving the full rundown if I am out and about. Yeah, the Sasha story was crazy because that was that was a nice uh, beach day because I was at the beach, actually not far from the bungalow. And um, I was in that place where I was like, all right, it's 2 p.m. I'm at least an hour from getting home. Uh, the, the noise is no good here. I can't cover this. Let's just wait. And that story really picked up until Clayton mm -hmm. had to prove where he was and this <laughs> and that. I, I guess the... The thing we have to juggle, it's like trying to get out honest information and trying to be entertaining. Which do you prefer? Like, what, what do you prefer to make on your channel versus what do you feel obligated to make? I love to give my opinions and my personal takes. I think if we don't know the situation, I'll always say apparently, allegedly, or just really like inform people that this is speculation versus like this is facts. I try and make it clear. Um, but I just enjoy like connecting with the followers. And I think we wouldn't be doing this. We wouldn't be making content if we didn't enjoy the community and like all the people who tune in to watch us and listen to us. And like, that truly is my favorite part. I enjoy that more than watching the show. I'm just like, I can't wait to talk to my followers about it after. Do you see a different type of follower depend for, uh, following you from YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok? Are they, are they different types in the sort of information they consume? Yeah, I mean, a little bit. I think I really just got my start on TikTok and then have been working my way of transferring everyone over to Instagram and YouTube. Um, so I think I, I always like to, I always assume that people are just from TikTok, but then now I just post a lot of my um, TikToks on shorts, YouTube shorts, which is kind of like, more of a popular thing these days and Instagram reels. And I'm honestly surprised how many people still don't have TikTok um, and have found me on Instagram. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, it, there are such different worlds and like, I feel like I'm at a ceiling within the YouTube world, a very, mm -hmm. a very happy ceiling. I'm happy to be there, but TikTok, I'm like, I, I have no way of watering my con like my content is meant for people that want to take a 15 minute video and go do the laundry. That's it. I have yet and, and, to, and you're good at it. And <laughs> yeah. then mine is for like, and then mine is a 40 second video. So it's yeah. just like the, this is exactly what you need to know. Here are the spark notes. I'm all about spark notes because people do not have time to watch these episodes or listen to these podcasts. So it's cool to feel like people rely on us. Not only are they entertained, but they also really rely on us to let us know, to let them know what's going on. Yeah. And look, I don't want to pat myself on the back here, but I was thinking about me, you reality, Steve, and I don't want to say, I don't want to start saying everyone cause I'm going to, I'm going to miss people, but Kelly Johns and bachelor, whatever, and, and Scoopy, there's like probably a dozen or so creators, Chatty Broads, Nick Vile, that, that probably account for about 95% of the traffic out there on the internet. And um, it's it's a competitive place to get your story out there, to get, uh, if you whether it, whether it be information you have. Let me ask you this. Um, you've been breaking more stories here. What do, you, what do you feel when you're breaking a story versus like summarizing a podcast? Do you feel like a weight uh, behind you because you're going to possibly be either exposing somebody or, or, or adding new drama to the public sphere? Honestly, I don't really think I break that many stories that are like too crazy. Like I feel like at this point I know a lot of the a lot of tea behind the scenes that it's just like I'm not the type of person that's going to expose things um, that people don't want out there. So at this point, like it's just about talking about things that are already out there or that people are comfortable with me addressing. Um, so I'm kind of just more of like taking the route of giving my opinion on what's already out there and then just you know, get, giving my thoughts on that. And also I do feel like all of us creators do such different work. Like everyone's unique, everyone's an individual. So even if it is a competitive nature, I feel like no one can compare to each other because we're all so different. Yeah. You know, someone yesterday was like, Oh, I wonder if Dave Neal's paying Nick Vile. And I think they referenced the fact that I will re I will like respond to a lot of his clips. And it's like, I'm just a commentator. I, I look at it the way, the thing I like about YouTube, it's like being at the bar, having a drink with your buddy discussing, you know, whatever you're watching on TV. I don't want to be breaking news. Um, I've had a couple instances where I've had breaking news stories and 
the the fear of getting it wrong. Uh, with this Eric story, no no one's brought it to me, but I don't know if I would have wanted to share someone else's story. Um, oh hell no, I, absolutely not. I, when it comes to like the ex girlfriends and the wives, like or whoever else, like the cheating stuff, I'm not getting in the middle of that. I won't break stories when it comes to that. If you see me break a story about a bachelor couple, it's very likely that I've actually talked to one of the people um, behind the scenes and they gave me the okay and they gave me the tea. They they want their story out there. Yeah, and I love this this like modern world we live in. I think you had maybe like a hockey reporter staying at Bachelor in Paradise, sending you like moment to moment updates. It's just so funny how we used to watch like a prepackaged show, episode one to twelve. You would watch it and it would be done with. And now it's like safe house visits, uh, people leaving comments on Airbnbs of who's fighting. Could this, you know, the the amount of detective work that can go down when you have you know several hundred thousand people all. Over reading into things is pretty magical, but on the negative, it really, it really just adds to like overbearing sort of, um, judgment from a toxic audience. Um, but this is what the people want. I do polls all the time. I'm like, do you want to know the spoilers? Do you want to know the tea? People are more invested in what's going to happen and the speculation versus the actual drama when it happens. It's never as fun to watch it on TV as it is speculating before things air. You know, I always say that too. And when, when someone comes out with an apology or clarifies or Claire and Dale are officially together, okay, story's over. Pack up your tools. Time to go. It's that wondering the asparagate who's uh, silverware is that what fingernail polish is that my my issue if i could solve anything in bachelor nation it wouldn't be those that consume the gossip it'd be those that dm the contestants parents dm this or or works or try to get them fired it really it it and it might only be one percent of an audience but when you have several hundred thousand people kind of following these day-to-day moments it, that's the toxicity that I think bothers. I don't think Clayton Eckerd is bothered by people wondering about, you know, speculation. I think it's the inbox, the DMs that are attached to your cell phone in that sort of bully culture, that idea that these contestants can take it because this is what they signed up for, as if they're any yeah. more of a human than the rest of us. How have you, and I don't know if you've talked about this in the past, how have you incorporated um, your own, um, uh, like, mental health with, some of the negative comments you receive by putting yourself out there. So I actually don't get a lot of negative comments too often. Um, like I, I think I told you once before, like I know people will talk shit about me on Reddit every once in a while, but I actually just won't read it. Like I literally won't read it. I'll maybe peek for a second, but I'm like, I don't need to hear this because it's going to piss me off. And if I get like a few negative comments in my DMs, like I just really won't respond um, cause it, I just like, who cares? Like it's, it's, it's all stupid, but honestly, my page is really positive. Like I always talk people up, even if I have a negative opinion, I'm aware of my platform, at least now, maybe not as much a year or two ago when I was younger, but now I've really like come into my own as like an adult and a creator where I'm just always going to give you my honest opinion and my truth and make it a positive video at the end. So there really is no room for negative comments in my comment sections. And if people are talking about me, in other places, it's likely that I'm just not reading it or listening to it. Yeah, I made that mistake of trying to negotiate with negativity. And I remember I was flying back from the uh, from the Bahamas and it was right before it was literally in my airplane and I was spoke and I was about to go on airplane mode and I had, and there was a negative comment thread on Reddit. And it's like, here I am returning from the Bahamas dealing with some loser who wants to call me X, Y and Z. And I had to just kind of abandon my Reddit account that had my name on it. I, I prided myself in saying, this is my name. This is where I am. But then people would start pulling me into drama. And I was like, you know what? All Reddit does in the comment section is provide a place for other people to shit on you. You just don't need that. You know, we already get enough of that. Uh, we are, you know, we get enough criticism in the world in general, so you don't need it. So that's smart of you to just avoid it. Just don't read it. You literally just don't read it from the Pope down to the most likable person. Even Tom Hanks would get, you know, ridiculed on Reddit. You just can't, you can't win. Uh, and I, and people, I, I think people well, just I was gonna say, um, go for it. I'm all about a good clap back though. Like if necessary, like I am so sassy. That's like who I am. Everyone knows that. So I'm all about like a good clap back, but I like to make it like laughable and funny. Kind of like my video last week with the whole like Nate Michelle country singer saga. Yeah. Oh yeah. Another, another good one that, that is in the top 10 for the last couple of weeks here. Yeah. I, that was fun. what I, what I like to do if I get a comment that's just ridiculous is I'll share it on my YouTube 
and that'll inspire more comments. That'll inspire new Patreon members. And then at least it's bandwidth that's going towards what I'm building versus like Reddit, which is, you know, some open source thing. Everyone who's on Reddit that's complaining about monetizing content, it's just like, do it yourself, do it. Everyone should have a YouTube, have a TikTok and all that. I mean, look, if you could, like a couple of years ago, would you have imagined, was this part of your plan to be, a commentator, a voice in Bachelor Nation, or did it? Did you stumble upon it just because the algorithm told you that you were good at it? So I went to school for journalism. I have my degree in broadcast journalism. I graduated about three years ago. So I moved to LA with the hopes to do entertainment hosting and reporting, which is what I'm doing on the side. But it wasn't until the pandemic when opportunities and studios shut down that I didn't have a choice if I wanted to live my dream and do what I'm passionate about than to take it online. And since I am so Gen Z and social media savvy and TikTok was just starting, it all kind of came into place because I've been watching The Bachelor and reality TV my entire life since I was so young. So it's really just about finding what I'm passionate about, what my degree is in, and how I can make money. And that's kind of how this all started. And now I've kind of built my own brand and my name. And I feel like I'm still just getting started. There's still so much to do. My one complaint is that I want to still do more things in person. I feel like things are starting to get back out there again. And I don't want to be like stuck at home forever making these videos. Like I want to be on carpets and TV shows and premieres and just like interviewing people. So that's the ultimate goal and why I even started this to begin with. Oh, very good. Very nice to hear. Uh, nothing makes me feel older than hearing Generation Z tell me about growing up. That makes me extra old. Uh, you know, because I always I always say this, you know, what, what makes good content online is information plus entertainment. Clearly, you have your entertainment down. And then the information just comes from years of, you know, being involved with Bachelor Nation, just absorbing that content. For me, I've always enjoyed talking about the dynamics of relationships. So that makes it easier to sort of like break things down. I would have never thought thought in 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 a world of like hot takes and strong opinions my channel what i've kind of grown into and maybe the older i get it seems to be like putting uh putting out the wildfires saying eric's not as bad as you might think he is mm -hmm. uh this person's not as bad or in and again some people might call you an apologist or this or that but i've always just said people are trying the best with the information they have what's your take on eric with regards to these two giant scandals that rocked him in the last two weeks, along with his father passing away from a brutal illness yeah. just this last month. Yeah, there's a lot with Eric right now. And I, I also do want to second you. I love um, helping people out as well. That's another way that makes me fulfilled because some of these contestants are contractually obligated so they can't speak their piece. So if I can ever be a middleman to help tell someone's story in a positive light, like I'm the first one to do that. Mm. I, I love um, helping people out. But in regards to Eric, I mean, this is just one thing after the other. I mean, the blackface is obviously extremely inappropriate. I think that a lot of the blame should be put on the school for allowing this or and just like that environment that he was grown up in. I hope that he has kind of grown as a person and I believe he has since. But this cheating scandal is a little bit like worse in my opinion because he literally was leading this girl on and left to go on the show and basically told her to stay with him and then texted her when he got back so it's just like not the best look, but I do want to give him the benefit of the doubt and listen to him speak um, on After the Final Rose. And maybe him and Gabby are solid and they're fine, but if not, I think she should leave him because she can probably do a lot better right now with anyone else than someone who's going to bring her down. She has a very bright future and career ahead of her. Yeah, you know, it's, it's so interesting because I look at Eric and... And I, and I wonder, did he say out loud what everyone thinks that the show really isn't that serious? It's almost like finding love would be like a good thing, but you do get verified. You, you will make some money and have new career options open up. And then I look at him, and again, these, this isn't me making an apology for him. This is just me going, here's a guy who's dated this beautiful woman, Amanda, for a couple months. Amanda has a child. He's unemployed. Does he really think he's ready to be a stepdad? Uh, it was part of it him saying, I'm not ready for this. And were the words he used to Amanda by saying, oh, it's nothing real, it's garbage, I'm just opportunity, was that his way of trying to push her away in a nice way? And again, we don't know, but I look at it that way and I go, can you blame, if you're Gabby, can you can you be accept the fact that he wasn't serious going in and then still realize you might have made a, a once-in-a-lifetime connection? And that's something I guess we'll have to see play out mm -hmm. on the After the Rose. But you mentioned in your TikTok, you think, you think that's not going to last? Yeah, I, I just don't know how it's going to last. Also, do, I don't know if you caught this, but she deleted a couple pictures on Instagram like yesterday of Eric. 
a couple of their pictures from the show. She cleared them out. So I don't know if that's because he was there was a lot of hate on her page or maybe she is in the process of leaving him. But I just don't know how she could be with him after all of this. Like she just doesn't need that right now. However, if they're solid and they have a dynamic and maybe Eric surprised himself when he got to the show and really fell in love with her, then none of this drama with Amanda is going to matter. We just really have to see where they're at. And we're all anxiously waiting. Has this not been the longest season ever? It's one of those like 10 weeks of people saying boring and all of a sudden everyone's like, whoa. And it's like, well, this is, this is, you know, that like they say, you got to set up these characters. A couple months ago, I couldn't make a video with Gabby or Rachel and get any views. It was all Clayton or Katie Thurston before that. These characters yeah. are built and then they're talked about. And you just hope that they're just not disposed after. Like like you said, they're under contract for one or two years. If they go back on Bachelor in Paradise, that contract extends. And they're not able to make any profit or money. And I understand le um, the legality there. I understand The Bachelor doesn't want someone coming on. Then the next day, they start making money with a, a competitive brand or a different dating show on CBS or whatever. I get that, but... We tear them down and then don't give them the tools to really profit unless they're lucky. It, it's 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 really one of a kind to be a Becca Martinez, a Caitlin Bristow. There aren't that many people, especially um, uh, lately, that are profiting in, in any substantial way off the show. Look at Cassidy Timbrook. She's a waitress. She's mm -hmm. she she was the quasi villain on the show, and then now it's like, what did she get out of it? We'll have to see what someone like Logan gets out of the show. Uh, he's obviously going to be on Bachelor in Paradise, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not that it's not that steroid era of guaranteeing a million followers and this this whole thing that comes from it not anymore not anymore at all like no one gains followers from the show as much as they used to i i tell people because people ask me like should i apply for the bachelor i'm like no if this is the show where you get crucified everyone from your past exposes you and then you don't get as many followers or opportunities out of it as you would expect go on love island go on another show, don't do a reality show and just try and become an influencer on your own because there's so many different ways to make content and go viral these days. This show is is getting really ridiculous and toxic. I almost feel like it's on its way out. Like I don't even know if I can see myself reporting on it in like one or two years. Is it the show or the audience or what combination of both that's making it so toxic? Um, I think the show is, is what kind of sets it up. I don't think they're growing or evolving as a franchise. And I think that it's just like enough already. It's just so much drama all the time and just so much picking apart. And we're just not seeing authenticity on the TV. Now we are at the end, but I feel like it's just a lot of fluff. And I'm kind of into shows that are on Netflix or streaming where it's like you get all the episodes in two or three weeks and then you move on with your life. This is coming on four months. Yeah, you know, as a viewer, you want to be able to binge it. As a recapper, I like I love that they're spreading True. out the finale because... No, me too. You, me too. No, but I get it. But as a, you know, when it comes down to milking the teat of Bachelor content, you know, uh, we'll have Bachelor in Paradise coming right after this. And well, that'll pretty much lead us up till Christmas. And then we'll have what might be Zach as... As the next bachelor are you are you pretty uh confirmed that it's going to be zach yeah i mean based on what just variety said and what Re reality steve has said that is my interpretation i mean i also did get a, a few dms saying that they know zach or they know someone who knows zach who and they confirmed to me that is the bachelor but i mean you kind of have to always take those with a grain of salt so i'm definitely under the impression that it is zach and i i don't mean i'm not really excited about that i don't i didn't feel a connection to him all season i think he's probably a cool dude but it's more just like okay like a mediocre choice, like what else? And I don't think the show takes makes these choices lightly. I think I've talked about this. I believe a reality Steve. They they like pageant queens and athletes, and yeah. they like or people a, with famous uncles or famous. But people that were like, oh, they cast him because of his uncle. I go, you think his uncle's that famous? That has nothing to do with it. Um, but I think that they like someone who can be agreeable, who can buy into it. And that's not necessarily like an intelligence thing, but it's just a type of person that will buy into it. Like Clayton, he was like, I'm here for the journey. I'm here for the journey that he was able to sort of steamroll his journey and um, affect all these other people. Uh, what do you think of Rachel? Now, she didn't do what Clayton did, but uh, she definitely is understanding how difficult it is to be in the spotlight. How do you think she's handled it all? 
I mean, I think the hardest part of the show for her, like while she's filming is like, it's clear that she wants to pick Tino, right? Like she told him she loved him and she said she was saving that for one person. She told him that she loved him when there was like two or three other guys there. So imagine how hard it is to have to fulfill your bachelorette contract and duties and put on a rose ceremony and go through these dates and maybe introduce someone to your family when your mind is already made up like that seems so exhausting i feel like we got to give claire crawley a little bit of credit here like she <laughs> she liked and she was just like peace rachel's been dragged this season i mean she is emotionally exhausted you know you could see that on after the final rose this week i feel so bad for her because i know that she wore her heart on her sleeve she did her best it probably wasn't the best idea to make her the bachelorette to begin with. I don't know if she was in the right state of mind coming off from Clayton's season to get thrown into this. So I feel like a lot has came out her and she's handled it the best way she could. She has a lot of producers in her ear telling her what she has to do, who she has to be. She's comparing herself to Gabby, who's five years older, clearly has more confidence and it's sad. And I just hope that Rachel finds some resolution within herself, even if she is you know, going to walk away single from this. I just hope that she at least find some growth and confidence and her journey ends on a positive note because I definitely relate to her and I really appreciated her heart and getting to know her this season. Yeah. And I love, and I love that we don't exactly know how it ends uh, because it's probably still going to spill out into the streets. What, 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 whatever happens Tuesday night, it ain't over. There's going to be more to come, but um, I hope she does regain some sort of like, I don't know. I hope more people start rooting for her because yeah, you look at her and you do see someone who's insecure in this position. I mean, she, she exposed herself to Clayton and in that kind of ripped out her heart and then almost immediately goes into this scenario where she's um, whether they wanted to or not pitted against another, uh, another woman here, Gabby, who's older and has a little bit more of an emotional, I don't know, intelligence, uh, just the, just the way that they deal with, uh, their breakups and things like that. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it all, how it all plays out. Um, I don't know. What did you think of the experiment to have two bachelorettes? Do you think they'll do this again? I, I actually, I liked it because I think that they got broken up with together. So it only made sense and it made it different. So I appreciated it, but I think it was just hard because we really didn't get to know all of the guys. There was no competition. Like Jason and Johnny were just such non-entities. So I feel like Rachel and Gabby brought different dynamics. Like what Rachel brought this season is that she had guys who loved her and were fighting for her and it was more competitive. So I feel like Rachel carried like the love department and then Gabby kind of carried like the queen energy that people like to see, like the style, the confidence, the funny nature. I think that they should do two bachelors. I think it's only fair, maybe not this year since we're all kind of exhausted from that, but I think it would be an interesting dynamic in the future. And I'm also excited for After the Final Rose to see Tino's dad. I feel like we need to talk about this because imagine his dad coming, Big Tony. Like they need to get the, all the families there and have them on one stage and just like give us the reunion of a lifetime. Yeah, you know, I actually have grown to like Tino, uh, Tino's dad. I just see him as like a guy who's used to his little circle in his Facebook community and he's having fun with it. And um, you can't blame him for not taking the show seriously. The show's got a pretty low batting per batting average here. So it'll be interesting how it all works out. Um, I've got one last question for you. Tell me about your love life. What's going my on? Love life. Yeah. Is, let's it's, spill it's to us. Non-existent. I am married to my career. <laughs> um, I tend to, I tend to kind of like crush on guys who are unavailable because it's just safe. I'm, I'm actually just so single. I'm not really dating. I don't do the apps. Um, it just doesn't work for me. I think that I'm a hopeless romantic, which is one of the reasons I love the show. So I definitely like imagine finding my Prince Charming one day. And I feel like I really just want to hold out for the right person at the right time and have it happen organically. So I'm really not looking for anyone and I'm not putting myself out there in that department. I'm just kind of focusing on making money, building my career, building my brand, and hopefully I meet someone soon. <laughs> so what's next for you career-wise? What's the next big story? Because we're, we're approaching 2023. You got any resolutions lined up? Well, I actually just got a job with Fox, which is super mm. exciting. I have been making TikToks for them, and I'm going to be um, covering The Masked Singer with them all season. So hoping to kind of do some carpet coverage and you know live events and TikToks with them, which is really exciting, building that relationship. Um, so that's super um, exciting that I'm exciting again. Um, and just like I have some more brand deals, I'm really starting to make it as an influencer. So I'm posting more personal life fashion on my TikTok, on my YouTube, on my Instagram, and just kind of um, building my own personal like hosting career and resume and getting, you know, letting people in on Zachary reality and not so much just The Bachelor. 
Great. Well, good luck with all of that. I will be here to report on it whenever we have a new Zachary reality breaking story. Um, anything yeah. else we need to promote for you before we get going? Yeah, I mean, I just I suggest everybody check out my interview with Deandra. Um, I talked to her on my YouTube and my Spotify earlier this week, and she was able to share her side of the story in regards to Negate and Nate. And we talked a little bit about how she handled the backlash. So I think it's an interesting listen, just because we heard Nate's side of the story on Nick's podcast. And I got the exclusive with Deandra. So if you want to hear a little bit about her and where she's at, I would definitely check that out. All right. We will post a link to that below. Everyone, make sure to go give Zachary some support. And thanks so much for stopping by today. I appreciate talking to you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a good weekend. You too. All right. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We really appreciate your support. I hope everyone has a fantastic weekend. We'll be live Tuesday before and after the finale. It's going to be a three hour finale. So we will be live at 7 p.m. East Coast and then 11 p.m. East Coast. If that's when it ends, we'll talk to you then. Follow me on Instagram and I'll be on Patreon for behind the scenes content. We'll see you later. Bye, everybody.